Backward chaining is something I get asked about quite often. It's a feature recently added to Drools, and it's something that people who aren't used to rule-based programming get confused to, particularly because backward chaining is not that common compared to uh, reactor systems. So whether you're working with Drools or Jess or Clips or JRules, these are all predominantly uh, reactive forward chaining systems. They respond to changes in your data. Um, Jest does have a form of backward chaining, um, and we've more recently added this to Drools. Um, the backward chaining added to Drools is a uh, full prolog-like derivation of trees. So I'm going to go over a specific use case of uh, backward chaining called transitive closures, or simply put, it's about reasoning with graphs. So I've created a little example about a house, and the house has uh, lots of things in it, and these things cause a graph, um, a graph of a transitive um, items. So we have a house, the house has an office and a kitchen, the uh, kitchen has a knife and some cheese in it, and the office has a desk and a chair. Um, so it's very, very simple. I've not made the graph too big. And um, what we're going to do is we're going to write some rules to start doing some reasoning about this. So first we create um, the Java code, and the Java code inserts each of the locations. The location class is very simple. It has the item and where it's located. So the office is in the house, the kitchen is in the house, the knife is in the kitchen, and so forth. Um, you can see the graph there representing that. Um, notice, compared to the previous graph, um, there is no key in the draw, and that will become obvious why that's relevant later. We then define a query. The query is used to look at the data that has been inserted into the rule engine. So the query here, as you notice, is recursive. Is contained in, is calling, is contained in. Notice also as well, there's an or, because that um, drives some of the specific behavior, and the uh, Z variable in the first location. This will become clearer in a moment when I go over some of the examples. Our first rule is a simple one. It simply prints out every string that's inserted into the system. This is so that we can see how things are executing and get an idea of the flow. Our first rule, using the is contained in query, is the go1 rule. This rule will fire when the first uh, string go1 is inserted into the engine. What all it is doing is asking is the office is in the house. Here's a reminder of the query and note the red line showing that the query is invoked by the rule when the go1 string is inserted. Here you can see the go1 being created, inserted into the engine and fire rules called. The dash line shows the separation and the actual output of the engine from the firing of the uh, go rule and the go1 rule. So it says go one because that's been inserted. It has a salience of 10 ensuring it goes first. And then the rule matches. To help understand uh, what's going on, I'm going to use some uh, color coding and highlight uh, the part of the query that is matching the data that's being invoked. So here you can see that is contained in is called with the office in the house. And that highlights the is contained in query in green. As we know, there is an instance in the engine of office and uh, house and so that simply matches on the first location and returns and you can see that in red. Go to is an example of a transitive closure. Now if you remember um, there was no instance actually called um, draw and house. Um, draw is in the desk. So this example is going to show how we can have a simple query to recurse down to find that information. There's the query again. When you insert the go to string and call fire rules, it correctly tells you that go to has been inserted and that the draw is in the house. Uh, notice to determine this, it had to recurse down several levels. So let's have a look at how that works. When the go to is inserted, um, the rule will match and the is contained in will be called with the arguments draw and house. I've used the green color to show you that the is contained is being called and um, the X and Y parameters. Unlike the previous example, there is no instance of location, draw, and house. So instead of using the first location pattern, it goes to the next one with the Z and the Y. Now you'll notice the Z there is currently unbound. That means it has no value. It will return everything um, that is in that argument. And so Y is currently bound to house, so it will return everything in the house. So it's going to return the office, and it's going to return the kitchen. So it then uses the office and says, is the draw in the office? And I've highlighted in brown. And notice that's going to recur. So it's asking the query again, is contained in. So it goes backwards, um, back up to the is contained in. And that's the backwards that's referring to, the recursiveness. As the algorithm is recursive, it would also call is contained in for the draw in the kitchen. So is contained is being called again. 
with the arguments draw and office. Again, there is no fact or instance of uh, draw and office, so it doesn't use the um, it doesn't match against the first location pattern. Instead, uses the or um, to match against the next one. As the Z is unbound, that will return a row of data for every um, item that's in the office. And uh, the first one would return would be the um, desk. So here, Z is equal to desk. This results in is contained being recalled recursively again with the arguments of x equals draw and z equals desk. We've now recursed down is contained in three times. This time there is an instance of uh, the draw in the desk so um, that matches on the first location and now it recurses back up bubbling the answer back up. So we know that the um, draw is in the desk, the desk is in the office and the office is in the house therefore the drawer is in the house and it returns true. Go to showed example of a transitive uh, query that returned information available within the system. But Drawls goes much further than that. It can do reactive transitive queries. That means you can ask it a question that is not satisfied, and um, if that is later satisfied, it will return the answer. So in this case, we're going to say, is the key in the office? Well, at the moment, if you remember, and I said this right back at the very beginning, there is no key in the system anywhere. So Go3 is inserted. Fire all rules um, is called. The first rule that matches any string returns go3, and nothing else is returned because there is no answer. However, while go3 is inserted in the system, it will continuously wait for it to be satisfied. If we then insert um, a new location of the key in the draw, um, that now satisfies the transitive closure it's because it's monitoring the entire graph. And uh, that rule matches and fires, and it says the key is in the office. Now, I'm not going to show you the whole recursive levels. It's one more than what you saw before, but it's exactly the same process. Go4 shows how we can ask queries with unbound arguments. So here, thing is unbound, it's unknown. That means it will return every possible value. So it's very similar to the Z value used in the actual uh, query. So in this case, we're asking it for everything that's in the office, but it will tell you everything in all rows below. The reminder that the thing is the out variable, um, it's unbound. When go4 is inserted, you'll see that um, it returns the keys in the office, the computers in the office, the drawers in the office, the desk is in the office, and the chair is in the office. So it returns all things that blow it transitively. Go5 is the same thing, but this time we have two unbound arguments. Thing is unbound like before, but this time so is location. So we have no uh, bound arguments. And what this basically does, it says, tell me everything that's in everything. Go5 is inserted, just like before. Fire rules is called, and um, you can see the results there. I'm not going to read them all out, but if you go through it all, you'll see that everyone returns everything that's below of it. Well, thank you very much for listening. Um, I hope this has been informative. It's the first time I've tried to explain backward chaining in such detail. I hope that it worked. I hope that it makes sense. and. Uh, I hope you find it interesting. So anyway, leave your comments on YouTube and let me know what you think. Um, thanks. Bye.